So we've probably filled in this sort of survey before where we're asked if we agree or disagree with something or neither or strongly agree, strongly disagree. Um, it's usually known as a Likert scale. Um, now, we've all filled it in before, but the question is, if you're a researcher and you set this, how do you present that data? And there's a little bit of controversy about how you would do this. Uh, some people average them to try and get some indication of a central tendency of the, dis uh, of the data and the distribution. Um, some surveys just compress it down to a percentage agree or disagree. So they just say, if you ever tick those boxes, if 50% uh, tick those, that's fine. Um, but that kind of obscures maybe your distribution. So one of the better ways of doing it is to simply uh, present it. In this case, we've got a a graph which just presents the data above and you can kind of see the distribution between the ones who strongly agree agree the kind of the neutral ones in the middle and so on so you can see how one of them is a bit dominated by the strongly agrees here we've got probably a bit more controversy because there's a lot more people strongly disagreeing instead of disagreeing um, there is code for doing this in things like R stats and so on but let's show how to build this sort of thing uh, in Excel, because you know, maybe this is what you've got access to, maybe it's what you're comfortable with. Uh, and the long story short is that this is a stacked bar chart uh, going horizontally, but it does require a little bit of manipulation to get it to work properly. You can't run this stacked bar chart just on this raw data. It needs manipulated. So I'm gonna come into a new sheet where I've got some data slightly different to the one I've uh, got above. I'm gonna yeah, just get this a bit open so I can read it. Uh, and what we're gonna do is now try and manipulate this in, into a way that could build a stacked bar chart. So I'm gonna copy uh, my rows here. So I've got them strongly agree, agree, neither agree or disagree. Um, and I'm going to make a copy of that one actually. So I've actually used, well, I've got five rows on the top. I'm going to put six here. So I'm going to press Control D just to uh, duplicate that. Let me just drag that down, give me a bit more space. Uh, and I'm going to copy the categories as well. So what I've got here is kind of a replica of the table above, uh, but there's an extra row in it. And why that's the case will become really clear once, uh, once the bar chart's in place. And then it's just a case of copying down that data. So I'm going to do equals, click into that cell. So this column that says easy to use, strongly agree, should say five. And I'm going to drag that across and then down by two. So I've got a complete copy of that. But for the neither agree or disagree, what I'm going to do is if you have a look at this bar chart, I need the zero line to kind of line up halfway in between them. That's where I want this bar chart to be centered. So for the bit that's above it, I'm going to take uh, neither disagree or agree and divide that by two. And then below it, I'm going to take the negative of neither agree or disagree and also divide it by two. Now, drag that across. So where I've got five, 2.5 of it is positive, 2.5 of it is negative. So everything on this part of the table is going to appear in the negative side of the graph. Okay, so now I'm just going to do equals and minus the disagree. So instead of one, it's now minus one. Drag that across, drag that down. And that's pretty much it. That's our data manipulation. Uh, this will plot on a stacked bar chart. So I'm going to take this entire thing, go to insert, and then my bar charts the stacked bar chart going horizontally. And let's just tidy this up, get rid of the chart title for now. Uh, and you can see it hasn't worked. It's not quite correct. Uh, so we go to switch row and columns, and this is looking a lot more uh, like it. This is, this is the right sort of thing now. It's what we're looking at now. Let's have a check of what this uh, is actually referring to now. So if I click on this series here, the gray one, what you find is that actually that's the highlighted neither agree nor disagree. The orange one here, and that's agree. Oh, and the dark blue one strongly agree. That's in the wrong order. Now you can do this multiple ways. You can rearrange these rows if you like. Uh, alternatively, we can go right click, select data, 
and have a look at the data sources. Now, if you've uh, inserted the entire thing correctly, including these, these will be automatically labeled for you. But if not, we just go to edit and set the series name to be that. And all we need to do is rearrange these. So if we do strongly agree down to there, and now they're disagreeing or agree to be at the top, suddenly it's now in the right direction. We've got uh, the big column on the right here, that dark blue one is now strongly agree, uh, agree, then neither disagree nor agree, neither disagree nor agree. Great. So now it's just a case of formatting it. How is this going to look? How do we need to make this work? Uh, so first thing, I'm going to just tidy up and double click on my X axis. And when I've got my axis options up, uh, I'm going to find the vertical axis crosses part and select maximum value. You can set another value and rearrange it, but do maximum axis value and it'll move it off to the right. So to me, that's a little bit counterintuitive that the vertical axis option is somewhere on the X axis, but I suppose it makes some degree of sense. Uh, and the next, well, we'll just color it. You might want to bear in mind some accessibility issues. So use a reasonable contrast between them. We're going to highlight the strongly agree and I'm just going to pick kind of a darkish green. So it's really dark and really stands out. Uh, the middle one, the agree, I'm going to pick as a paler green. I'm going to make sure that this is maybe a, a darkish gray or a, a mild kind of gray at least. And then I'm going to go maybe uh, orange, dark orange. So there's at least some contrast between these. You can visualize it, pick whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. If you make this really thin, if you don't want uh, it to be as big, for instance, you might want to then go right click to format the data series and change the gap width. So usually when it gets quite thin, I'll change that from 150% to just 50%. Now the gap here between each of the bars is, is narrow. It's, it's only about 50% of the bar width instead of 150% of it. Uh, and that's pr pretty much it. You can keep the key if you want, but it will appear slightly out of order. So maybe you want to explain that in a figure caption instead. Uh, and you can see that this is, you know, fairly straightforward, isn't it? And you can kind of see that we've got a bit more, wherever people have said easy to use, it's a bit more gray. It's a bit more when they say fun to use, there's a bigger, bigger kind of strongly disagree there. So maybe that's telling you something that that's a lot more polarizing as a question. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now, one thing is what order are these going to appear in? Uh, that can be quite difficult. So where I've got it here, it does kind of kind of start with the least popular thing up to the top and the most popular thing to the bottom. Well, how you want to order it is up to you, but the way that I probably do it is I would probably find the sum of all of these, which sort of gives some kind of measure of a central tendency. And then if you highlight the column and hold down shift, you can start to drag columns and reorder them. So if I drag my lowest one to the right, uh, the left here, Hold down shift, drag that across as well. You can see there's a thin line that appears that we're going to rearrange the columns a bit. Oops, oops. Now the way I've rearranged that, it's actually kicked it out of the data table. So I just need to expand this again. Click on the green. Probably do this before inserting the table, but this was just for illustrating rearranging the data. Uh, I did try earlier doing this with a table and some filters, but it doesn't seem to pipe through to the uh, the graph. So if someone knows the correct way of doing that, you know, do let me know. Uh, it would be a lot easier to be able to reorder this dynamically instead of manually, but maybe I'm not that far yet. Come on. Trying to talk and grab these handles at the same time is obviously a little bit more difficult, but that is how we uh, can build one of these. Final one. Put the uh, strongly disagree there, and therefore I've now replaced it. Uh, select data, change the categories, get rid of that, insert it again. So this would be the data that's used to plot it. This is not data that you want to present. So we may just, oh, let's just get rid of that. Let's change it to white, 
the text and can't see it anymore. Drag it up there. Get rid of the outline view. Let's take the grid lines off so it looks right. Yeah, and there we go. We've got raw data here. We've got it charted down there, and that's probably one of the best ways of describing Likert data. It lets your reader kind of do the analysis for you and try, and you kind of showing the distribution rather than trying to hack it into kind of a, a single figure.